the next session, which is the panel discussion session. We have five CIOs from Odisha. I would request Dr. Deepak Kumar Sahu to moderate this session and the panelists in the panel discussion session are Biswajit Mohapatra, Partner and Global Deliver Reader, IBM, Deepak Panda, Head IT, UMSL, Dr. S.K. Meher, CIO, Ames, New Delhi, Subrat K. Panda, CIO and CTO, Anand and Anand, Upkar Singh, VP, IT, RMSI. Let me introduce the brief about the topic. New technologies to improve customer service are emerging that help business boost their service levels while still keeping a firm eye on their bottom line to ensure business continuity in a challenging economic environment. In today's digital age, companies can get a comprehensive or 360 degree view of customers by accumulating data from various touch points that a customer may use to contact a company. Emerging technology such as artificial intelligence, machine learning, and IT automation are some of the cloud power technologies gaining momentum that are poised to lead the digital transformation of the transformation in the coming years. Although artificial intelligence, Internet of Things and virtual reality are creating a lot of buzz within the sphere of customer service. It is the employee-centric technologies such as workforce management, cash management, consolidated desktop agent, internal collaboration tools, and unified communication that currently deliver the most value to the customer service function. These technologies focus more on performance monitoring and developing support. So let me introduce to the panelist of uh, today, the Dr. S.K. Meher, CIO, Ames, Delhi, Mr. Deepak Panda, Head IT, UMSL, Mr. Okar Singh, VPIT, RMSI, Mr. Biswajit Mahapatra, Partner and Global Business Leader, IBM, and Mr. Subrat Kumar Panda, CIO, CTO, Anand and Anand. So before I st uh, start the discussion, uh, I would request every panelist to stick to the time limit of two minutes for each question. The first question we want to start with, uh, we are entering a new automation age that is changing the way we work and manage business operations. What is your take on it? Can you start with uh, Upkar Singh? Yeah, thank you Deepak ji. I think very pertinent topic uh, you have raised. Now, I believe uh, this new automation is, I, we are already in and you see if you uh, the line between the it and non it organization is not visible anymore so, so every kind of sector and organizations are adopting you know new technologies and automation because the line even between the local and the global uh, business is also not visible anymore right so to remain competitive not at the local end, but at the global end, organizations are moving towards the automation. And how does this help basically uh, in, in multiple ways? Like one of them is it is improved efficiency, right? Automation actually streamlines your processes without sacrificing accuracy and quality, right? So when your team can access the accurate data, they need to perform their job efficiently, naturally goes up. Right. And the second uh, benefit uh, of the automation is that is heightened the productivity. Right. The best tasks for automations could be those that are repetitive and boring for human workers. Those can be automated. And the third benefit we can uh, figure out is that it boosted the accuracy. Right. So automated system are obvious choice for any process that requires entire accurate information and figures. So automation can be brought in such process. And the other one is the easier collaboration and tracking of progress and changes, right? So like uh, an automated system does not need to be prompted to update and track progress. We'll never forget, it will never forget to move a project along and keep track of both progress and changes. So it helps in that manner. And it also enhances the flexibility. Right, automation is in a way is not a one size fit all solution. We can pick and choose how we integrate the latest innovation in automation so that the most benefit of our business and workflow can be achieved. Careful consideration is required which tasks in our different procedures and methods 
are the best candidate for automation, which helps to make the most out of the available emerging technologies. Good. Some of the examples in the industries, if you say manufacturing industries, they're using automation for predictive maintenance, production enhancement, and quality enhancement. And in any retail industry, if you see Amazon Go, the cashierless supermarket, the use of robots and AI in the retail sector is growing at a rapid pace. And even in healthcare sector, if you see, artificial intelligence is already being used to diagnose and treat disease. So this is, you know, as a summary, automation is helping to work and manage the business operation to the next level. Thank you. Wonderful. Now, what? how Subrat, you will say you are into a different profession. Huh? You can throw some light, Subrat. I would uh, add upon what Ukarji said, uh, that uh, uh, with the uses of this modern technology like AI, NLP, and all those things, how it has helped. For example, let me cite an example of what we did in this uh, pandemic is one example where one of the uh, users who used to copy extract the inventor's name from WIPO website and then feed in in a particular form, uh, copying various elements, the abstract, the uh, gist and all those uh, points from that WIPO website and then fill in the form, which we uh, did it through robotic process automation in which exactly the uh, nationality of that inventor, the uh, place and all those things, the abstract were put into the exact column because these things uh, matter quite a lot when a patent application is filed. And it used to take around 45 or 50 minutes for that user to fill in all those things. But uh, with uh, the use of uh, a bot, which we created, it could pull out, just insert the application number, the patent application number, and it could pull out all the relevant information, fit it in the exact format, and then push it into the application and uh, the mail would automatically get generated and be sent to the patent office, which earlier used to take 45 minutes. And if a user had to do for 10, 15, for example, 10, for 50 minutes used to be spent, Whereas uh, with this, it decreases to just one minute only. And the accuracy level as suggested by Ukkarji also, went up to 100%. Hardly did we have any kind of mistake. So <clears throat> I would say that uh, uh, with these modern technologies, uh, it increases the business uh, efficiency, the business outcome, the profitability, and I would say that uh, the engagement with the clients become faster and because the patience has decreased considerably, uh, any client wants an immediate response. And when things are done in a, a faster way, uh, the client uh, satisfaction level goes up. And uh, hence, uh, this is the outcome. This is one of the examples of utilizing the modern tools which are available now. Vishwajit, uh, how, how you want to throw the example? Okay, good. Thank you. So I kind of completely agree with what uh, Mr. Ukkar and Mr. Subrat said. So, you know, the world is becoming more intelligent, more interconnected and more instrumented today, right? And uh, the way I look at it, automation is almost becoming the DNA of this entire cognitive journey that we all are uh, uh, in the course of taking today, right? So there is focus on quality, there is increased focus on productivity, and also there is increased focus on time to market advantage that every business, business decision maker is really looking at today, right? How can I improve the productivity? I'll give you a simple example of uh, software engineering practices, maybe process automation, right? Since all of us are from software background, so you have a large monolithic legacy application made up of 5 million code, maybe, built on some of the extinct technologies like natural Arabus or PL1, and you want to move it to a newer environment, to a cloud-based environment. How do you do it? People who built it are no longer there. We all know documentations are not there in place or not in sync with the source code. 
without automation, how do you extract the requirements? How do you extract the design practices and patterns and principles that's there in the source code that you can modify to build the architecture in the newer environment before you forward engineer the code to the target environment? Completely impossible unless otherwise you think about automation to migrate those monolithic legacy applications to target cloud. And that's why we hear pretty often that most of the legacy modernization projects are failures, right? Predominant reason is that right kind of automation practices are not being followed. Simple example again, like uh, testing, right? Do you really need to put hundreds of testers to do repetitive manual testing in your organization? Why, why can't we leverage the automated robot to do that to testing and completely replace the uh, overall manual testing that we do, starting from generation of unit test cases, test data to actually performing the testing, right? So those are the practices that's evolving today that can automate your entire software engineering process. And we all know as one of the trend today, low code, no code is getting so much significance and so much acceptance predominantly uh, because of the automation, right? Coming back to different use cases across different uh, industries, uh, I think Mr. Rukkar again talked about what's happening in the financial industry, right? Today, let's say a bank who is struggling for anti-money laundering or some of the financial frauds, how do they manage it without right automation being in place, right? Maybe they have to do some adaptive uh, behavioral analysis, utilizing some of the artificial intelligence and machine learning techniques that built on the uh, cognitive automation capabilities, right? So those are the places uh, probably industries are also finding a uh, lot of uh, automation capabilities, whether it's a uh, static automation capability, whether it's a dynamic automation capability or cognitive automation capability. I think uh, today, as I said, uh, uh, that's the center stage, that's the foundation. Any business who is not leveraging automation uh, and not uh, really doing that co-creation, collaboration and coexistence is not going to be very successful. Yeah, you are right. So Dr. Meher, what, yeah. what is your thought process when you are into the different industry, has healthcare industry? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it is nothing different than any other industry. It is also a, a same uh, kind of adaptation is there. What Ukkar has said, or Vishwajit and other people, they have say, spoken here, all are correct. And all are applicable to the healthcare industry also. Uh, healthcare, uh, the major problem is that uh, the mindset of the people in the healthcare people to change uh, when you do the process reengineering, and uh, they do not uh, they, they do not like to, like to accept the new processes you will ask for because um, uh, because they, they they do not have that much of exposure to uh, take the new processes and adapt it. But this COVID time, it has forced them to change their mindset and the processes. Because uh, people do the automations, you need a process engineering, and that process engineering to like, cut down your different uh, small processes and bring the, uh, uh, bring the productivity, your time, and your uh, quality of data. So, so in these cases, in the healthcare, what it happens, uh, uh, when the patient is coming and you will stop the patient door to come and you have to give the remote consultations, in that case, the process has been changed. But, but sometimes doctor needs to see the patients. In that case, you have to check out the, whether the patient is needed to visit physically or not. So you have to put the some, we have to use the tools of chart boots and we are screening the patient and we have divided the patient that you come through the teleconsultations or you come through the physical uh, uh, physical consultations. This is the one thing so, uh, I can say you. Another one is the the blood testing. Because, uh, because uh, when you do any test, there is a six levels of samples. It will be handled by the different human being. That uh, human being means uh, in our case, it is the technicians. And the infection, infected uh, but blood samples, no, don't, nobody want to carry or no one want, want to put the blood sample to the machines. So here we have done a pre-analytic and post-analytic uh, automation process that when you collect the samples till end of the sample testing, till end of the testing and the testing the samples, it is not required any manual intervention. 
So in that cases, the logic of samples, the, any inferior, any means um, uh, um, on the process, what it happens, uh, the, uh, the sample may get contaminated due to the weather, due to the environments. That is also, it has not been reduced. And it has it has given more faster to the given the result to the people, and in healthcare we we talk just in time. Anything it will reach to the things in time. We can save the life of the people. So where to do the process? Automations. The new process has come up. It has reduced the uh, time, and the productivity has gone up. So, so, uh, so, the, so the acceptance level of the user level, because the cultural changes has come up during this COVID time and they have accepted the automations. So this is my submission in the healthcare. This is the difference of uh, what uh, other people, they are doing it yeah. uh, because the cultural changes has come up. This is the, one of the biggest achievement during the COVID time. Wonderful. Over Thank you, Dr. Meher. And uh, we have Deepak Kumar Panda. He's from the infrastructure logistics side. What is your experience, Deepak? Uh, thank you, Deepak Ji, for giving me this opportunity to become a part of this discussion forum. So I really appreciate the uh, points, insights given by all my fellow members. I would uh, uh, like I would more highlight on the challenges that uh, we are actually uh, people are uh, people may face with the adoption of uh, automation in different industries. You know the ways overcoming uh, such uh, embracing such uh, changes in the organization in uh, businesses you know uh, the fear that has come up due to the changes amongst all the employees how to overcome those things see if we look at uh, past few years uh, there is a major disruption happened in business models if you say uh, this is basically within uh, this has happened within last uh, four to five years and last two years has changed the entire process of business doing business for majority of the industries uh, now uh, the disruption that has happened during last four five years has become a trade for the future and if you see there's many of these changes, many of these disruptions has happened uh, based on the uh, emerging technologies, based on the latest technologies, which is uh, uh, like, you know, MI, uh, AI, ML, RPA, uh, big data, if you talk about augmented realities and blockchains, also the cloud. So uh, some point in time, you will see machines will carry out uh, more of the works done by humans and also beyond the work that humans can do. And you know, uh, with, they will do it with more accuracy. So there is a fear which is coming up with uh, a lot of employees, a lot of people who have been working uh, in different uh, uh, work culture, you know, who are uh, moving into a, a technological age from a, a manual working process. There is a fear of you know, unemployment amongst a lot of people which uh, I feel it differently because this will uh, open new doors for smart workers and uh, it is going to build a, a new work culture. So why am I highlighting this is that, you know, in Odessa especially, we see a lot of uh, denial to the changes with the latest technologies. I know adoption has become small uh, and uh, in, in construction, it is, the number is huge. So uh, I was going through a data which shows that you know increase uh, uh, automation, increase of automation leads to more hiring because it is making organizations more productive and grow fast, uh, uh, leading to more uh, recruitments. So uh, you know we should not fear of uh, uh, adopting these technologies. This these are really will help us. You know, uh, doing. Uh, much of a kind of job that is, uh, which we say is rot job, which we do repetitively, is going to be eradicated by adopting this automation processes. So such changes in business is really creating a lot of space for people who are creative thinking, who are into creative thinking and more focus in our innovation and problem solving skills. 
So I would give one such example wherein you know, if you see in the uh, in the uh, hospital industry, if you see the doctors who are who are having much more experience and you know, uh, with having a lot of success stories, are today adapting uh, robotic surgery, surgeons especially I'm talking about. They are uh, adapting. Uh, robotic surgeries they are uh, doing they are all successful doctors they have a lot of success stories in that timeline uh, in their uh, life but still they are adopting the robotic process because you know they want to improve their uh, processes they want to get more uh, uh, success stories they want to save more lives that is why they are adopting being the best in the industry also they are adopting this technology so that, that is why i would say uh, the changes are good for good. Let us embrace it and let us try and, you know, changing ourselves with the change of the uh, automation with adopting our automation process. Good. So, so as uh, most of the panelists are uh, more than 20 years of experience or nearly 20 years experience, I just want to throw another question. How the emergence of new technology can improve service quality? We'll start with uh, Subrat Panda. Uh, I would say that... Uh, I know we, that where you are coming from, you have built up your own data center. So no, no, no. <laughs> That's a wrong thing. Building a data center at present is a wrong thing because uh, at times uh, you have got sleepless nights. So, But since the management wants to have their own data center, that's a wrong thing. As a technologist, I would never ever uh, like to have my own data center rather than and not going into the cloud. Cloud is the best solution. For example, I would say that uh, uh, since they uh, agreed to get into the O365 and with the power automate, which has been given as a part of the subscription, in which uh, almost any user, like uh, Viswaji ji told, that with no code, low code, you can really do a lot of things. For example, uh, some, there are people who are completely critical for my correspondence in which I need to reply back. I just drag and drop and make a flow in the Power Automate itself. It doesn't require any coding or anything. So these are some of the ways in which any user having a little bit of knowledge and if uh, a proper training session is imparted by the IT department, then it helps quite a lot not only to lessen the work of the IT guys, but also increase the use of technology to elevate their pain and perform in a better way with less of thinking or less of junk being put inside their head, sleep peacefully, let the system or the application do their job rather than they're going back with uh, some kind of stress or something of not having completed a deadline or something because in service sector, usually uh, how much whatever people are doing, it seems that uh, it's too less. So with the uses of technology and with the, uh, and the giants who have created so great applications which can be used by common users, it's just that the training should be imparted in the right way, which will help everybody. So I would feel that uh, the new technologies are quite good if it is adopted. And if it is not adopted, then I would say that uh, it's a wrong technology. And there have been instances where uh, the change is too difficult. The adaptability becomes a challenge because of mindset rather than anything else. Is the mindset which has changed considerably in the pandemic, whereas uh, the change management and the process change management used to take months, takes only days, or it is just given that you go ahead. The IT the senior leadership have, given, have been given the mandate to go ahead and change if it is required. So this change has happened due to which I think uh, almost all the industry across uh, have changed uh, drastically and uh, have adopted new technologies 
to help them improve their efficiency and to service the customers faster. This is my take. Wonderful. So, Vishwajit, uh, what you will say for this? Okay. So, thank you. So, I think both the questions are kind of related. I'll still go to the automation question first and then come back here, right? I think uh, Dr. Maher talked about a very important point, right? Process automation and healthcare. And I'll share a story, which is my own experience. And that's again, leveraging the new technology. That's the second part of your question, right? So I was consulting a hospital in a very remote part of Odisha, basically, right? And the job that I was trying to do was to build a patient management system. Typically, you know, patient management systems are very simple, select, insert, update, delete, you could say, just capture the patient data and register the patient uh, instead of doing the old way of writing on the notebook, right? So we use best of the architecture, best of the technologies, MongoDB, Node.js, Express scripts, right? To build the best of the best uh, user interface. And is there any of you think that is there a possibility of this patient management system going wrong anywhere? Capturing the data, capturing the patient data and you have used best architecture practices and best technology to build it, right? Now the time has come for the rubber to hit the road. The feedback that we got from the ground, from the hospital, neither the hospital staffs are happy nor the patients are happy. What could have gone wrong in this case, basically, right? And we are worried, basically. We were not able to figure out what has gone wrong. But remember, this patient management system was built in a boardroom in some other city, not on the ground reality, on the Orissa in that particular hospital, right? Then we thought we'll go and visit that hospital and what's let's check what's happening there. When we reached there in the hospital, before reaching the hospital premises, the first thing we saw that uh, there are patients standing in the queue uh, uh, near the window to get registered. And there is the hospital staff who is registering the patient, is holding a handicam like this on one hand and other end entering the data. So we did all the automation, we used best technology, but did the life of the hospital staff change or it has become worse? Definitely all of you will agree that it has become worse because eight hours he's keeping his hand like this to take the photograph. And what about the patients? In a normal situation, they could have come and sit inside the hospital. Now they're sitting, uh, standing in the queue near the window. There is scratching sunlight, sunlight outside. Their life has gone for bad, right? And in the same time, if they're just scratching sunlight behind the back, all the photographs this guy is taking, taking all the effort, all of those photographs are going to be black, right? All the patients are going to look same, right? Automation, great thing. But if it is not connected to the ground right. reality, if it is not connected, technology is great, yeah. but it is not connected to the field reality, is not connected to the users. Uh, it's not going to uh, bring a lot of value, right? So there is pervasive automation all around us today and more so after the pandemic, things have really accelerated. But the very basic is that that should be connected to the ground realities, to the users, the need, the feel and the thinking of the users. Otherwise, it's not going to be very useful. The second part of your question, Dr. Deepak, is about how the new technology is trying to help and solve the service quality, basically, right? I'll give you some example. and. Uh, Today we know in this cognitive transformation journey, culture of agile innovation, exponential platforms, next gen technologies, all the technologies that we are talking about, AIML, blockchain, IoT, hyper um, computing or uh, uh, quantum computing, the high performance computing or quantum computing that we are talking about, all those are actually driving a lot of service quality and business results. No brainer, all of us know about that and all of us will agree to that. And just to give you some example, how it's really helping. Let's think about blockchain, right? I was associated with a uh, program where, uh, you know, uh, farming. So uh, avocados, I can give the example of avocados. Avocados gets uh, probably uh, harvested more in uh, uh, African countries, let's say Mombasa, right? Uh, and, uh, and the consumers of avocados are in Europe or uh, North America, right? Maybe at... Uh, uh, Rotterdam, right? So to, and avocado, all of us know is a perishable product. When you are transforming uh, avocados from Mombasa in South Africa, in Africa to Rotterdam in uh, uh, Europe, how do you really manage this? It goes through a lot of handshakes basically, right? Starting from the farmers to the brokers, then loading into the ships, right? And then translating those uh, to another point and then again getting those there in Rotterdam basically, right? So, so many handshakes makes things completely uh, uh, unusable and very difficult to manage these perishable products. Can we use blockchain techniques and make those hundreds of handshakes that's happening in this transportation process, uh, maybe five handshakes to make things reach faster at uh, Rotterdam, right? That's the value of blockchain that you can apply to the business. Or let's talk about 
again since i'm talking rotterdam probably i'll talk about another example of rotterdam uh, large amount of you know it's a busiest airport in uh, busiest port in the world actually right rotterdam right and uh, ships take hours and hours to really come to the port and uh, do their activities right is there a mechanism by which i can predict and uh, time out those uh, reaching of ships to the airport utilizing some of the artificial intelligence machine learning techniques through the real time data that i collect on the ships uh, reaching the port basically right again another huge of service that can bring a lot of value to mankind right in the same time if, uh, smallest things right if you today go to pune airport uh, pune railway station since i live in pune right today you will find mr arjun there who is cleaning the airport the robot right and cleaning the airport also having a surveillance system to uh, figure out if there are any uh, suspicious activities happening on the uh, railway station right uh, and in the same time giving lot of knowledge about people what they should do about covid covid warnings the symptoms what they should take care of those are basically the use of newest technologies and all pervasive parts of life and that's uh, improving the quality of service and quality of life as well right uh, a few days back i was traveling to a remote corner of uh, maharashtra and uh, i saw one of the cab driver he is using a cell phone and asking the cell phone to find out the path to drop me somewhere basically i i said that why you are doing that and he said sir i don't know how to type and this is a new place but i know using my voice i can ask and i can see what's happening and what is the route basically so this is the way it has really ingrained into everybody's life all these exponential technologies to create differentiated value and uh, um, make impact on all of us our life to the business to the people to the society as well yeah. wonderful so dr meher uh, what you will say on the statement of mr bisuji yeah i i 100% i agree uh, you see technology not an issue right now whatever you will ask all the technology is available to you but choosing the technology right technology for the automation in the real scenario scenario in that cases many people they felt what the bisuji has spoken it is true one example i am giving to you we have developed a clinical system for the gastroenterology department it has seven modules very minutely the all the data we are going to capture in the opd when we have started implementations each patient it was taking 40 minutes to enter the data and we are hundreds of patients it is not possible to do the uh, computations or automation of that place then we have discontinued again we have inducted uh, speech recognition systems which is around more than 99% accurate like ognito when we have implemented it has reduced to 10 minutes 10 minutes you see 40 minutes and 10 minutes what is the difference you look into it and now people they have started working on it this is the one kind of thing so on the other hand i will tell you uh, because ems is not only the patient care it has the it, it has the research it has the teaching it has the um, selecting the students in, in the national levels so all this is in world with just one example i am giving to you uh, we get around 7 lakhs application for the pg admissions uh, in different aims in the country how to scrutinize the, the seven lakhs applications with their photographs and identity so we have introduced the rpa it has taken hardly 5 to 6 hours to check their photographs check their signatures check their credentials uh, all these things it has taken in a half a day and in the manual system it was taking a weeks of time and many people they require to be involved this is the one the one real example of that second one is that uh, just i just i have spoken about the uh, uh, the lab 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 computations today's days most of the hospital they are looking towards the it should be a paperless it's supposed to have a flimless and left means two types it is the radiological and other is your blood or other samples test and this is totally be when we have done the automations at that times in one laboratory the microbiology we have around 220 clinicians there they were working for 8 hours right now the sample has gone more than 800 times and the 
manpower is required, it will be around 60. And they are working around the clock. The 60 people, they are working around the clock because of the automations. The process, it has been reduced. And, and the uh, people's mindset has been changed and they feel good because earlier they are working very hard. Right now, they, they have to only observe it. Everything is automatic. So, so then this, is, this is the... Hello? So this is the things it is coming up. Uh, just like one thing I am talking about it. Uh, we get around per day in COVID times because the sample size is very less because our less patients are visiting to the AIMS. It will be around uh, uh, 300, uh, 3.5 lakhs sample test. Okay. Uh, so uh, what we have done it, uh, the reporting, it is required within eight hours of giving the samples we have targeted. And we have started the automations. So we have used IOMT, the another uh, type of uh, IoT device, which is connected with the lab equipments. And this lab equipment has the robotic hands, which will collect the samples without physical handling the samples by the technicians. And it has been totally whole process is simple. Just collect the sample, then put the sample in the pneumatic table, uh, pneumatic tubes. The, this, this pneumatic tubes deliver the sample in particular labs where the test has to be performed. From there, automatically, the pre-analytic of the automation, which is, has the robotic hands, collect the samples, put in the conveyor belt. It will go to the individual machines after scanning the barcodes and it will process automatically. Just like totally automation, what you are looking into in conveyor belt for your luggage in the airport. It is just look like that. So, so this is the automation it has been uh, implemented. Here, the reporting was totally AI based. It is not required to doctor to see the, see the reports whether it is correct or not. Only few samples, if, if the report is contradictory, in that case, doctors see the uh, uh, physically, otherwise, rest of the sample, it will pass through the AI based tool, analytical based tools, and they pass the samples and it will be reported to the doctors uh, for the further uh, action onto the patients. So this is the one thing so what, what I am talking about. Another one is flimless. Um, doctor is used to the, without the flims, they are handicapped. Right now, the flims is, without flims, it is available in your mobile, it is available in your computers, it is available in your desktop systems. So all these things, it is coming through the uh, digital, uh, the medical digital imaging systems, that is PETS, picture, actual, and communication system in the digital imaging. This, when it is implemented, when the scanning has been done, immediately the alert has to go to the doctor that your patient, this, and this is the film, it is with you. And he can download from their mobiles, they can see it, and they can give the consultations consultation, uh, immediately. This is the things automation it is in the healthcare services. It has improved a lot, but uh, but definitely a lot of teaching we have got we have learned during the COVID time. The culture has been changed to accept the technology by the users. This is the one of the experience we have got it during this period of time. Good, thank you. Over to Asad, uh, uh, No, the, yeah. Now we'll move to Ukar Singh. If you can share the throw light to Ukar. Yeah, uh, no, thank you, Deepakji. And uh, I think uh, what, you know, uh, Dr. Shushil and Viswajit and other panel member has shared is the use cases are actually shows that this is the democratization of the technology, right? See how the organization and the business are adopting technology to improve the service and their product quality, right? So uh, basically what happens is the goal of any business in terms is in terms of the customer interaction is to generate loyalty right and there is no better way to do that than to offer quality product or services right so what i would here mention is that uh, that though these all use cases must have adopted these uh, needs of uh, uh, improving the service quality but the businesses you still want to use technology to raise the quality of their customer services 
need to focus on few things i would like to mention one is the data management and analytics using data collected from customer to analyze their preferences that is one is must requirement and streamline and automating business process to improve efficiency and keep cost low that is another part of this using technology for improving self service optimization is another angle to see that finding ways for customer to interact with your business when they want that is coming right and workforce effectiveness is the other part now as i come through a uh, you know new domain now that is a geospatial technology and solution i would like to mention very uh, pertinent thing is that how relevant are the digital maps today right see the new technology improving the service quality uh, all of this you know companies like swiggy zomato uber ola would not have been possible if there were no digital maps and if the maps were not supported by a digital platform right so it looks like in future maps will be the heart of any digital infrastructure so this is how new technologies is helping in improving the customer services wonderful now you have given a very right example now you hear from deepak panda yes uh, ukkar ji said no uh, uh, we uh, uh, interact with customers to you know get more uh, more loyal customers and the best way is to you know have quality product and services so uh, i have been serving all uh, for me in my working uh, period uh, my internal customers internal employees are been my customers so all my all of my fellow members have uh, pointed out uh, told many uh, things i would uh, say my experience in terms of customer satisfaction satisfaction which is real time so you know uh, today uh, one point in time when uh, and in the uh, when you need any kind of support uh, from uh, a bank or a credit card company there were uh, uh, a long queue you have to wait to get your uh, answers you know uh, on phone today there are many ways of communication uh, there is uh, if, if at all somebody is not picking up your call you have whatsapp uh, connectivity directly you can uh, send the messages you can have the chat boards you can have message services this is how the customer uh, service system has uh, you know improved uh, one of my experience what i have done with my previous organization is that you know building a chat board which really helped me in gaining uh, a lot of uh, support a uh, lot of you know good experience from the internal uh, employees or customers setting chat board for the b2b b2e and b2c kind of uh, uh, segments so uh, uh, we had uh, we created a chatbot for our internal customers uh, for our employees uh, which was connected to our uh, hcm uh, so any kind of support we reduced uh, uh, hr time in terms of you know getting documents uh, providing documents i'm sure there are, there are a lot of companies which has come up with same kind of solution also uh, this uh, uh, i did uh, two years before in the previous organization which uh, one of the my experience that is why i'm sharing so you know a lot of people lot of exercises in terms of uh, hr engagement reduced when we are talking about b2 uh, e kind of uh, solution we reduce the interaction between employees and the hr stops in the hr we reduce time uh, for you know getting all the information about their leaves their salary slips their uh, you know form 16 so everything chatbot was capable of delivering it to them uh, second was for the b2 c direct customer we could able to connect so basically we had a lot of we had uh, built in one more system into that was a lot of influencers we had who were carpenters you know who never used a smart uh, mobile uh, and a smart handheld device so we had a message system inbuilt into it even uh, made it in hindi language also 
where you know if at all if they try getting any product information they will be getting it through the messages also and we have some kind of uh, uh, you know a, a qr code system wherein they will get their uh, influencer loyalty program uh, for them as well and of course for the uh, you know um, b2 our dealers and distributors uh, wherein we created uh, a platform, a chatbot platform. If at all, they need to understand the, their, their sales order status. If they uh, need to understand the supply chain status, if they want to understand uh, uh, their payment status, everything was built in into it, which really had a lot of accolades in my uh, you know, career as well as a lot of customer satisfaction. This is few of the examples which has helped uh, me in terms of customer satisfaction. And of course, there are, as we said, all the all the emerging uh, technologies which has come up is bringing in a lot of uh, customer satisfaction, engagement, and uh, you know value to the organization in terms of uh, by adopting new technologies. Good. So now we move to the next question. When we speak on technology is driving data, device, and delivery, what is your say on? We'll start with Uka. Yeah. Thank you, Deepakji, and. Uh... You know, this is very, again, you know, impactful, you know, question, I think. And uh, I'm sure I won't surprise you if I, uh, you know, say that the smart use of technology is an integral part of success in business today, right? So we live in a digital era using mobile devices to create, cloud computing to collaborate, Cognitive computing and artificial intelligence to improve operation and data analysis to extract key insights. So the technology is impacting the industries of the futures in multiple ways. The number one industry could be technology, of course. So if you say there, cloud computing, machine learning, and AI, and big data were cited as the main factors that will make biggest impact. Take the number two industry that is health. As Sushil will also add upon that, uh, the health industry overall future now, uh, future output looks strong thanks to the subsectors of biotech, health data management, personalized health solution, which is based on the idea that health data will drive your immediate and long-term treatment uh, option. See the uh, e, you know, doctor consultation, right? This is helping in a way. So when you talk about the devices, right? So even the devices are, if you say the IoT devices, so all are driven by the technologies, smart devices, IoT devices connecting in uh, uh, industrial environment in smart cities, so they are all connected and integrated using the different technologies. And even if we talk about the deliveries, so deliveries are also being, you know, impacted with the new technologies. Like you might have heard of the company uh, called uh, uh, Grofer, right? Recently. Uh, using a technology, how they Im improve their delivery process is a way that they rebranded themselves as a name of Blink It, Blink It, right? And the grofer which used to deliver, uh, you know, the groceries and all those stuffs in one day or two day now used to deliver in ten minutes, right? So. So see how the technology says so they must have used some technology or the process around it to build this new uh, business process where they are able to deliver fast, right? So these are the uh, few ways where the technology is driving data, devices, and delivery. Thank you. Wonderful, wonderful. So Dr. Meher, you want to throw some light? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, I, I'll give us a new inventions what we have done in our, in our project here. First of all, um, definitely Ukar was spoken to us. Uh, really, I agreed. And um, this, is a, uh, this is the things we are looking towards it. The first one is that uh, the IoT devices. Most of the health equipment it is coming with the IoT device. Okay. 
uh, even uh, you need the ICU people. It cannot be monitored by the many doctors at a time. So, so all the means uh, vital parameters uh, equipment is supposed to be come through the uh, IOMT device, and it will display in a remotely, and doctor can give the consultation immediately so that the uh, the nurses or uh, the support staff they can give the treatment properly in the ICUs. Second one is the, the new invention uh, what I tell you. During the COVID time, patients were not coming, but we found that the because the particular area is there, it is more concern, a cancer prone area and they have a oral cancer much more. So we have developed a one software as well as the device. <clears throat> this is my research project, which is funded by the Ministry of IT. What is it? We need the one photographs in different angle of six photographs from the mouth where the ulcer has been seen with five megapixel at least of the mobile. And they, after taking this one, if they have a provision to put the fluorescent light, fluorescent light on that ulcer and take the photographs and send to us. What we have a another model we have created and we'll process that one. And we can predict whether this ulcer or tumor is a cancerous or not. And the accuracy rate is around 86% right now. So, so another uh, things we want to make it, we are, going, we are going to add it, that saliva of that tumors will collect also that one. And we'll develop a one kit on it and that will be tested at the home. If it is red, then it is a positive sign for the cancerous tumors. If it will add on, then will be around 96, 97% accuracy it will come up. This process, it will take hardly five to 10 minutes. But if you do the process in monotonic manners, it takes seven days to, to get the whether the tumor is cancer or not. This is the technology already been in the place and people have started using it. That's all. Thank you. Vishwajit, uh, what you will say on it? Okay, so I think the new business paradigm is all about the confluence of data, device and delivery. I'll give you a very simple example, maybe again, uh, the place where I'm consulting actually, right? Uh, so if you know uh, Maharashtra oil, uh, there is a place called Konkan Coast where there are a lot of rainfalls that come in Maharashtra, but in the same time, because of the lateritic nature of the soil, the water was actually not hold, water percolates down and go to the seas and rivers basically, right? So mm -hmm. huge rainfall, but then there is uh, no water for farming and other, other things, right? So how do you really make difference to life of these farmers in the Konkan Coast basically, right? Typically uh, in terms of... Uh, uh, doing the precision farming and helping them to uh, get crops the way they need it so that they have their livelihood, right? So I think Gupkarji talked about uh, geospatial analysis, right? Today you have all of the satellite data available, right? Uh, through either Landsat 1B or some of the other satellites who scans the world all the time and takes the satellite images, right? Can we collect the data from those um, satellites and maybe there are institutions like National Remote Sensing Agency in Hyderabad or IRS in Dehradun, you get those satellite imagery data and process those, right? And keep it aside. In the same time, can we really get the weather data through certain IoT sensors that we could put uh, on the farmer's lands to collect uh, not only the weather specific information, also the soil specific information, right? And then can we model those maybe using a geographic information system techniques? with the satellite data, with the weather data, with the farming data, with the rainfall data, and all together predict that this is the crop pattern, this is the land, this is the crop that is going to come. And uh, by the way, these are the two, three crops that we could do in a year so that uh, you earn more and you're, you live a better life basically, right? So those are the use of uh, uh, data being collected from devices, whether it's a satellite imagery or whether it's an IoT sensor device, and then, making that confluence conglomerated together to drive real delivery, real value for the uh, people who needs it basically. Uh, that, that's basically a societal cause. And today probably I think all over India and across the globe, 
precision farming is becoming very accurate, which is the best example of uh, data device and delivery. And of course, there are so many other uh, use cases probably I can talk about maybe because of lack of time, I will not be able to cover all of those use cases. Today, let's say, for example, bail flights, right? How do they do preventive maintenance of their entire uh, fleet of uh, flights, basically, right? Again, use of data, use of devices to do the flight management on click of a button, basically, right? To find out how the flight is, what is the fuel level, what is, is there any issues on the flight? All those things can be managed, uh, leveraging again data, the data that we call it, using various devices, various uh, other structured data that we collect and then analyzing those to get the right outcomes. And that, there are so many, almost this is the use case you could apply to any of the industries or any of the domains, so to say. Yeah. Good. Subrat, uh, can you throw some light on it? I would completely concur with all my panelists, uh, as they have said, and uh, as Ukarji initially talked about data device and analytics, I would say that it is data device and decision also. It's a decision which we make and the decisions are made instantaneously, whether I should do this or I should do that. And if we see that uh, we are so much attached to our device, especially the mobile devices that starting from when we get up with the alarm ringing from the mobile, Till the time we sleep off uh, before checking the last mail or whatever one is interested into any kind of application. Uh, it is the device which throws the uh, uh, insights from the data which have been collected. This so is the case for us also. I would say that it is in one way automated, delegated, standardized, and uh, uh, being done in such a way that uh, the way we consume it is for the consumers or for any decision maker to consume it the way even the dashboards are made specifically for uh, the requirement of uh, the decision makers even if the board is there but if you from a technology standpoint we do create dashboards in a different way because they can consume it the way they want to take it this is what i would good and yeah. one example which uh, everybody might have read in today's paper regarding the iot a person who was in us and his house was being robbed in uh, hyderabad or somewhere like that and uh, because of the sensors which were there in the camera and all those things he could know and then he called up the police station and yeah. they caught hold of him so this is a real case which was reported today also so how uh, the sensor acted, gave him the data, and instantaneously he took a decision. So this kind of decisions are taken, which help people, especially the top level people where decisions are taken uh, to do it instantaneously, due to which uh, the speed of business has gone up quite considerably. Uh, Deepak ji, I would just like to add uh, one thing into it. Yeah. Uh, I will take 10 seconds only. As uh, Vishwadhi was mentioning, you know, the using of geospatial data for the crop and all, right? So as now I'm coming from that uh, industry, so I would like to mention we have a subsidiary called RMSI Cropolitics, so, uh, which focuses on the data analytics that combines advanced modeling, machine learning, and crop and meteorological domain expertise to provide solution to decision makers in government, crop insurance, agriculture input sector, commodity trading and social sector. So there are now solutions coming up to help the crop you know, industry even, right? So this is how the technology is being uh, you know, used across for the things, for the devices and all that. Thank you. Good, good. I will connect you to certain startups. Those are working only on this agriculture domain. Okay. So we'll connect on offline. So the most challenging thing is responding in one sentence. So we're coming to the last question for this panel discussion. So we would request everyone to give in one sentence. Finally, technology innovation is no longer a nice to have, but strategic imperative that is a vital part of decisions being made today. What is your take on it? Ukar. Sir, innovation is the growth these days. 
in today's world of emerging technologies emerging market and emerging consumer demand companies must emerge to out to old molds and into new ones if they are to survive and thrive thank you deepak panda uh so uh, innovation uh, technology innovation is uh, now it is very essential for all the organizations to you know to get more customer response uh, industries needs to build or use innovative technologies to you know uh, to to uh, uh, focus on deliveries and to you know for quality deliveries innovation is uh, something which uh, all the industries all the segments cannot avoid so uh, if you allow me i can uh, give you one such example one sentence i said small... one sentence okay then it is it is uh, we cannot uh, uh, we have to leverage the advantage of the innovation and technology or else we may not we may find difficulty in sustaining the business thank you dr meher yeah in the past the technology was not there that's why people they thought that they want to do some innovations but it was not possible just like ai ai was in 1988 when i have read it at that time it was the technology not there that's why ai has not implemented in the healthcare right now technology is in place so that's why new innovation is coming up uh, in the healthcare domains wonderful mr biswajit Okay, so if we really look at the industry joining, I put it as a three-degree matrix. The first degree is all about maybe uh, when all of us were in college or schools, right? Where the more more play was around dollar two versus dollar twenty. Every organization was looking at go to a locust area and do the delivery. That was the first degree matrix, no longer valid today. If you go to the second degree matrix, then people started looking at lot of quality credentials, become CMMI certified, ISO certified, and win business. that also no longer is valid only companies that is going to be successful and survive those companies are companies who are operating on the third degree matrix which is focused on process innovation and technology innovation so to cut the long story short and my one liner now dr deepak disruption is inevitable and reinvention is essential essential for sure for all the industries wonderful thank you dr mr subrat panda uh, in one sentence i would tell that uh, embrace a new technology reinvent oneself along with the organization upskill and learn like a kid wonderful what a power packed panel discussion and we have a wonderful panel today we have and uh, all the five panelists are from the five different verticals you have the sk meher from the hospitality background the deepak panda from infrastructure background upkar is from the geo spectacle background biswajit is a technologist is from the ibm and subrat is from the advocacy edo advocacy background anandana so we have a wonderful input thank you so very much for sharing wonderful input i am sure our audience are looking forward to read the attend the session thank you gentlemen it was truly a power packed panel discussion session 